Nothing but one set of rules. Oh, I told you a couple of Sundays ago that when God put the house together, can I remind you of how God put the house together? Can I just take you back a couple of Sundays and remind you of how God meant for a family to be? God took one man. Come on in the room. were born to those who were one. Hello in here. That's the way God laid the foundation. And we have problems. And we suffer with dysfunction because we did not allow God to build a house. God told his children long time ago through the mouth of Moses. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you. That ye might do them in the land where ye go to possess it. And that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou, you, and your son, and your son's son, all the days of thy life, that thy days may be prolonged. This ain't just for you, mom and dad. This is for your children and for your children's children. Now, how are my children's children going to get what I am getting? I have to teach it, not by word only. Come on, in the room. If I say one thing and then do something else, my walk will cancel out my talk. You ain't dealing with a bunch of dummies. These children can work programs on a computer better than you can. They are teaching them in kindergarten how to log on and to be computer literate. So you ain't dealing with a bunch of dummies. You can't say one thing and then live something else and expect for the children to respect you the authority figure that you say you are. If you go talk the talk, mama, daddy, you got to walk the walk because they're watching you. And it's what you do that's going to teach them more than what you will ever say. I say God comes first. I got to live like God comes first. You're looking at me funny. Let's go back to the Bible. <laughs> Verse number three. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel. So many times Moses tells them, attention to what I said. Listen, God has something to say to you this morning and he's saying that the Lord our God is one Lord. Ain't got but one. And if God is the head of this house, if God is building my house, 
We don't have but one set of rules in this house. That's what God says. What God say go, we'll go in this house. What God says shouldn't be in this house, ain't gonna be in this house. That's the reason Joshua could stand up on the annals of biblical time and say, y'all need to choose this day who you going to serve. You going to serve the God that we know to be God? Or are you going to serve the gods who are on the other side of the flood? He said, but regardless of what y'all do, as for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. You got too many folk out here trying to serve the gods of the land. Your children come to you and they want to go over such and such as house and you don't even know who such and such is. You don't know their mama. You don't know their daddy. You don't know where the child lives. The only thing you're concerned about is just getting them out the way. Just go. Just go. Okay, okay, let's go. Let's go. Get on out of here. Trying to get you some me time. Don't you know that me time? For that child turns into jail time. And you're going to have plenty of some you time when you're sitting out there trying to wait for the bailiff to come and to release your child from somewhere that they shouldn't have been anyway because you needed just her me time. Children, according to God's word, are an heritage of the Lord. They are a blessing. Hello, maybe I need to start right there. You're looking a little confused. You're looking a little bewildered as if, as if children are a burden to you, but children are a blessing to you. In the psalm, in the psalm, in 127, God says to us through the psalm is that they are a heritage from the law. And a man that has his quiver full of them is blessed. They're not a burden. They're a blessing. And if you didn't want them, come on in the room. Put your seatbelt on. If you didn't want them, you shouldn't have done what it took to get them. Because God is going to hold you responsible for that child that you birth to this earth. You follow me? So you better change that mindset right now. Because you're going to stand before God in the judgment and you're going to have to give an account for how you dealt with those children. God instructs us in verse number five that we are to love him with all of our heart, soul, and with all of our mind. And then we, these words, he says, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. Mm. And then thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Not let the TV teach them. Not let the computer teach them. Don't leave all the teaching to the teacher at the school. You don't know what kind of background she done had. You don't know from what neighborhood he grew up in. I don't know that they're supposed to teach my child how to read and how to write and how to count, how to add and subtract and how to multiply and divide. But when it comes to morality, that's a class that ought to be in session at the house 24 hours a day. 365 days a year. You don't get no day off from teaching your child how to serve God. That's your job. And God told him a long time ago, teach these things to your children. When they get up in the morning, read the rest of it. When they get up in the morning, when you sit down at the table, come on in the room, before they lay down at night, teach them about my laws. As you're going about the way, as you're walking from point A to point B, teach them who I am and what I'm about. When you teach children about God, you don't raise a generation of little angels.